So speaking of whales, what are what is the data showing us or uh, that the whales are doing in this time? Yeah, so it's looking good. Uh, I, I like the sign of this as well. So on top of people uh, spouting that it's that we're in a bear market and a crash is coming, we have whales basically scooping up hordes of coins while uh, everyone is panicking. Welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Edward, and with me today is Brian from Santiment. And we are, of course, going to do a deep dive on the metrics around Bitcoin and altcoins and what the hell is happening in the market. Brian, great to see you. Good to see you, Tony. Yeah, wild ride here to uh, open up September. It was a disappointing August, uh, especially the last week. And uh, I think we're kind of starting to see a bit of a turning point. But that's what we'll be discussing here today. See how realistic that is. Absolutely. And look, historically, I, I've been looking at different data. August and September, especially September, have not been really great for the crypto asset class and markets in general. Um, I don't know why that is. It's just the legacy, <laughs> you know, flow of things. But yeah. um, what we've seen is that, you know, it is a great accumulation time because usually Q4, we see things start to pick up significantly. So let's start with Bitcoin. What are you seeing from a sentiment standpoint and fear and greed? Yeah, and just to kind of stay on that topic for a second, in terms of cyclical price action, especially in crypto, which we have to remember is still a relatively young sector, 15 plus years old, uh, when we start to get into the habits of saying uh, September is bad, you know, March is historically good, we get into a, a pattern where it's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and we start to see those trends Kind of be made to be broken especially if the entire crowd believes it you tend to see the exact opposite happen i still remember like uh the 2017 bull run everyone said well november was the best time ever so every succeeding year make sure to buy in november and then the following year november was awful right so i i i can buy into it a little bit due to you know, governmental policies and the correlation with stocks a little bit and taxes and how seasonal flows kind of go. But overall, I, I don't advise uh, trying to time your buys based on month out of the year, even though I'm seeing that narrative being cycled around social media a lot right now. Um, so with that said, I can share my screen and we can look at kind of how the crowd is perceiving these markets at this moment and uh, see how much we might be able to counter trade that right because that's the whole point and i want to start with this article that i just put out uh maybe 12 ish hours ago and it talks about some of the different uh common queries and keywords that people often bring up in in crypto in this case we're looking at bear market or crash words like bearish uh dump bear run bears you get the idea and we noticed right before the turnaround when it was still down at about 56.6k 12 hours ago um, we had the biggest spike in these negative keywords since that big august 4th and 5th crash last month that's significant because we know what happened after that spike happened it ended up being the ultimate time to buy right and similarly we had this big spike here on August 27th, I believe. And there was a temporary bounce from there before, yes, we retraced a little more. And now we're seeing a bigger one. And I find this to be a very good fear signal and a good sign uh, if you're a contrarian to what the crowd is doing, which we believe at Santiment you should be. This is a solid, solid sign that you can buy with less risk. And while others are, um, fleeing to the exchanges to sell off their remaining crypto because they're afraid of seeing prices go down further. So I'm curious what you think about that. Yeah. And, you know, over the years, as I become a more knowledgeable, advanced uh, investor, I've learned to use signals like this to be a contrarian thinker, to go against the herd, right? And the overall sentiment of people getting bored and fearful and like, oh my God, I guess the bull market's over. I'm not going to make my gains. And then I'm like, you know, now I learn that as soon as uh, that 
that sentiment starts to rise, I, I execute my dry powder, right? And go buy exactly. the dip. So I have been buying the dip since early August with that crash. And um, I, I'm looking at this as a buying opportunity. So this is really great insight. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, all those people in your Reddit threads, and uh, not yours personally, but just anyone who's watching this in your Reddit or Discord private channels and stuff, especially if they're large, especially if there's a ton of people, remember that the, the common narrative is often the opposite one you should be following. Um, and there might be very insightful, very intelligent people who are making up those uh, users you're reading, I, but you have to remember uh, this is a zero-sum game, and it's not just a bunch of teammates here in crypto who are all in this together as we uh, save up for those big Lambos. It's uh, it's a brutal market out there, and you have to understand what the novice traders think and what the whales think, and you guessed it. You want to be kind of in the latter's group as much as possible, avoiding the crab think uh, along the way. So speaking of whales... What are what is the data showing us or uh, that the whales are doing in this time? Yeah, so it's looking good. Uh, I, I like the sign of this as well. So on top of people spouting that it's that we're in a bear market and a crash is coming, we have whales basically scooping up hordes of coins while uh, everyone is panicking. Um, it's not like the most aggressive accumulation in the world. But you can see just in the past three months, um, let's see, make, let me make sure that I've got the past three months honed in here. So if we just go to the 10 plus BTC wallets, they were holding 16.15 million coins back on June 3rd. They're up to 16.18 million now. So they've accumulated another 34.2K Bitcoin over this time, despite prices uh, looking like this, kind of all over the place and being more down than up. So naturally, the whales have kind of keyed in on getting more crypto while small addresses are selling it. And uh, historically, this works out pretty well for them. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tether and USD coin are clearly going down. So they're mm. swapping a lot of these stable coins for more Bitcoin during this time. Ideally, we start to see the stable coins go up too, albeit there, it's not as important as the Bitcoin line like this. But mm -hmm. if we start to see these go up also, then then watch out for a big bull run because you've got new money coming in via fiat instead of being exchanged from stable coins. Yeah, that, that's great insight, man. Um, the whales are buying, right? You, you zoom, went in doubt, zoom out, and the stable coin supply going down. So we know that stable coin is being used to buy Bitcoin. I, and I follow on X or Twitter um, whale alerts where they show the minting of coins on Tether or USDC in the treasuries. Uh, it's very fascinating. And, yeah. um, and that's another signal I pay attention to. And this is also a great signal because it shows you uh, both on the graph here. So this is really great. Yeah, we find signals from that account all the time, by the way, and then analyze how it looks according to our data. So, yeah, shout out to Whale Alerts. I think they do great work. So um, as far as Bitcoin on exchanges, um, uh, you know, the supply on exchanges, I know that's another metric we've looked at in the past because it indicates is there going to be a lot of selling or are people hoarding, right, and pulling it off the exchange? Yeah, so right now it's looking pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin is moving more down than up. Uh, and more and more coins are basically moving into cold wallets where they're uh, in the hands of, of individuals and, and being put aside for safekeeping. Now, the downside is uh, if you see too much Bitcoin moved off, the entire network can get a bit stagnant because if everyone's hodling, that's not, uh, that's not ideal. You need to have healthy circulation. You need to have dormant coins coming back in at a normal uh, pace in order to keep the network active. Active addresses help uh, market caps grow over time. So this is still more good than bad. Uh, I just want to put an asterisk on this metric because we we still need to see supply moving to exchanges so that they're being swapped and traded around. And you'll see that again, especially when uh, prices get super volatile and you see either a big spike or a big crash. Uh, that's the time where you tend to see this metric go up. But right now being down, that means there's less risk of a future 
massive sell-off. Mm. Yeah, it's a good point and a caveat there that uh, you do need some sort of balance with this metric, right? Exactly. And we have this metric that's related to that called mean dollar invested age. Um, really briefly, I'll explain it. The way it works, if I just take off everything else really quick. So the way it works, if I were to go back five years, you'll notice there's a bunch of dips in this metric, especially right here, right when the bull run really kicked off in um, late 2020. And then you see it again here in late 2023, right when that bull run was going nuts. Uh, when this line goes down, it means that those older wallets are moving coins back into circulation and the average age of coins sitting in all wallets in Bitcoin is moving down. So that's basically a justifier that we are in a bull run like here and here. When it starts to move up aggressively and symbolizing that there isn't a lot of old coins that are uh, moving back into regular circulation, that's where it can be a little more unpredictable. We can still rise like we did here, but sometimes you'll see a lot of flat areas like here. So ultimately, if and when, I would say when, we start to bounce once again, whether it's now or when we get closer to 50 or 45K, we're not gonna make predictions here, but when that happens, if you start to see this line dip, that's the ultimate buy signal that we are getting a lot of healthy new coins back into circulation. So that's a great long-term indicator to go along with that supply and exchange analysis we just did. So um, let's talk about altcoins and what's happening there, because we know when Bitcoin's correcting, altcoins bleed out, you know, even worse. Uh, it's usually pretty bad for altcoins and because they follow Bitcoin's move. Yeah, totally. So obviously a good starting point is just to look at the overall performances. This is just the past week. Um, we can see Bitcoin down here at negative one and a half percent, Ethereum down to They've just been sliding very, very slightly, but you can see how Solana is down 7%. Tuncoin has been taking a, a huge beating, down 15%. Uh, Render has corrected, BitTensor, Fetch. So a lot of these altcoins are really struggling due to Bitcoin's uh, slippery footing right now. And I anticipate that can continue um, until we start to see some mild growth, uh, maybe a return closer to uh, the low 60Ks would be a good time uh, or a good signal for altcoins to, to be a good buy. Uh, generally, as most of you know, Bitcoin leads the way and then you start to see that profit from Bitcoin redistributed into altcoins. Um, but as of now, at least as of today, we're already seeing a bit of a recovery. Uh, the question is whether we can break 60K, which would be a solid sign, uh, and whether the crowd gets too greedy and euphoric. If they have a lot of doubt, that adds to the argument that you can buy altcoins safely. Yeah, and I mean, it, look, it's a great buying opportunity, <laughs> right? Um, all around, I think. And uh, that's how I'm looking at it. So I, like, I've been personally buying the dip like Bitcoin, Solana, and Ethereum. I'm, I'm going to look at some other tokens, but those are the top three I've been primarily buying the dip on. Um, let's talk about ETH, though, specifically, and Solana specifically. Like, What signals are you seeing for those? Yeah, there's a few things here we can check out for Ethereum. One, one thing I like is the fact that um, the average trading returns for shorter-term traders that have been active in the past 30 days, they're down about 3.5%, and the long-term traders are also down about 7.5%. Uh, when both of these are under zero, that means that buying right now would be uh, historically better justified than usual. Uh, you don't want to be in when you see them both well above 0%, like you saw here in the mid-July top. And then you can see what happens when they got really low in the August 4th, August 5th range uh, during that crash. So the, the further down these two lines go, the better opportunity it is. But anything below zero means, at least on average, this is a better time than usual with less risk, with, of course, 
the caveat that anything can still happen. Yeah, great point that, uh, look, uh, Armageddon could happen and all markets get wiped out, right? Yeah. Uh, or other situations. But uh, if, you know, everything's going according to plan and the status quo, it's a great buying opportunity. And you, you just hodl and wait for the market to continue its move upwards. Yeah, exactly. And there's one other thing I wanted to check out for Ethereum. Yeah, check this out. So, We've been mostly in this positive sentiment for Ethereum for this six-week stretch going back to mid-July. But just as this new week has rolled over in the past, actually, let me let me refresh this because we have a little more data. There we go. So yeah, it's been pretty much the full week of this candle. And look how negative people are toward Ethereum. For whatever reason, I'm sure there has been some news that's come out. Uh, people are extremely negative you know what it was i think it was vitalik um acknowledging that he sold off some of his bag and that upset some people and i think reduced confidence in ethereum for ethereum holders and i think it happened toward the beginning of this week right around the end of august if i'm not mistaken but regardless yeah the negative sentiment here is very prominent i haven't seen such negative sentiment since the end of december um back when prices were in the low 2200s or so very close to what they're at now actually um but this would be another good sign that we are getting close to a bottom for ethereum and if we were to rip up right now it would catch a lot of traders off guard which is generally how crypto markets work yeah uh, i'm waiting for that short squeeze <laughs> where people are so bearish and they see this month, uh, things are getting bloody and they're like, yeah, I'm going to open a short. I'm going to short the hell out of ETH or Bitcoin. Yeah. But uh, look, markets move in cycles. And and as you mentioned, they do the opposite of what the herd is thinking. And then short squeeze, a rip upwards, hopefully a, a face melter. Exactly. And and we can look at the actual longs and shorts. And, and at least right now, it looks pretty neutral. But I've been keeping an eye on how many people are longing versus shorting uh, altcoins. We did see, if I zoom in here just a little bit, we did see a pretty healthy amount of shorting going on, especially after that initial crash. All these red lines here are indicative of more and more shorts coming in, um, but they've kind of dissolved for now and we're in a very neutral territory. But if you start to see these big bright red lines, like right here, this was a short signal. Let me just take out price for a moment. So these were like huge shorts that came in right as Ethereum and the rest of crypto crashed, which is, of course, how crypto traders' minds work. They want to sell after a crash happens and they want to buy after a spike happens, which in reality, the strategy is to do the complete opposite, mostly. Um, so if we start to see tons of shorts again, great sign. Um, if not, not the end of the world, as long as we don't get super long once again, like we were here. Hmm. Um, let's look at meme coins, that specific segment, because we know meme coins were ripping significantly earlier in the bull market, uh, 2023 into 2024, but they've seemed to cool down a bit. There hasn't been as much liquidity, as much activity. What are you seeing there? Yeah, agreed. They, the overall mentions of meme coins, I actually talked about this in my article last night. Um, check this out. So this is just the overall discussions related to meme coins over the past six months. And look how much the social dominance was just spiking like crazy day in and day out back in March and April. Of course, this was the all time high and people were still very confident we'd see a new all time high in early April. And then we start to really dip and the mentions of meme coins go down. We suddenly have a recovery and oh, look, everyone's excited about meme coins again in early June. And then we top and fall way down. So you're, you're getting the idea. Meme coins are a very good reflection of people getting greedy and people getting overly confident in the markets. And when that happens, uh, it's usually a bad sign for the, the near future. So right now, not a lot of discussion compared to what we saw back in March and April for meme coins. And as long as this continues, it's indicating we've got at least a healthy amount of fear related to the sector that is considered to be the most uh, greed reflective and speculative. 
Mm, great point. And I know meme coins are usually an indicator, like you said, of like uh, retail going a bit nuts, uh, getting maybe overly greedy, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's that category that <laughs> brings in that uh, certain types of investors uh, versus, let's say, the blue chip cryptos, right? Um, so it's, it's, just, it's fascinating. Um, so maybe this is a good sign, right? We're headed to that bottom before the next run up. Exactly. There's a little more fear than we've seen in a while, especially what we just saw with Ethereum. So that's a good sign. Um, mm -hmm. And then lastly, we wanted to chat about Solana, right? Mm -hmm. So the the two main things for Solana, it's pretty much the same stuff we'll look, we just looked at for Ethereum. Binance's funding rate actually looks pretty good for Solana right now uh, because there's a lot of shorting going on. You can see the far right of my screen here. That's some pretty deep red. And the last time we saw some deep red was here on August 18th. And then prices ended up surging about 13% from that time that people shorted. And then the even more aggressive shorts happened back here on August 4th. And we immediately saw a 25% surge in, in Solana. So again, the caveat is there's no guarantee. But if you're playing the probabilities, which is what professional traders do, then you want to Keep this in mind for Solana and any other assets that are being shorted right now, which there are plenty of. Mm. Uh, not a lot of believers in Solana right now, especially after it dropped below 140 once again. Uh, this could be a good sign that there are some short liquidations coming up with the uh, assumption that Bitcoin is able to keep its footing right now. Mm. Um, I know I didn't m mention this earlier, but uh, could we take a quick look at XRP? Because I know there's a lot of people... Uh, who are interested in that token. There's been some big news. So I'm curious what's happening there from a social sentiment standpoint. And also, are, you know, I'm assuming people are shorting it right now, given that everything's down. Yeah, totally. We've got a lot of XRP data, uh, more so than we have for Solana. But uh, mm -hmm. we can start with the sentiment. And, and right now, there's not anything special in terms of discussion rate. You do see there's a nice, healthy, you know, long-term climb in discussion in terms of social volume here. So I like the look of that. Um, you can see what happens when it has a sudden spike uh, and social volume and dominance start to go nuts up here. That's when we see corrections. But right now, obviously, the price is pretty unassuming. It's kind of staying with the crowd in terms of its performance. So uh, as far as just discussion rate, it's neutral. Sentiment looks slightly on the positive side. Unlike Ethereum, there's... Uh, uh, maybe a, a slight bullish bias that we'd prefer to see come down a little bit, but it's not like an extreme p bullish sentiment like it was back in the beginning of August after it had that big surge. Um, other things that I like to check out for XRP, actually the total amount of holders is a good one. Mm. If we go back to the last year, yeah, it's just nothing but a climb fest right now. We especially saw a ton at the end of the year last year. Uh, but we can see just in the past year, the amount of total wallets that hold coins in them, not just total, total wallets overall, but non-empty wallets, essentially. It's gone up about a little over 11.2% in the last year. And that's good for 535,000 more XRP wallets than we had one year ago. So I like and the look of that. Is, and that includes whales and retail as well? It's everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can always presume that the majority of non-empty wallets are very, very tiny wallets because they're just much easier to make uh, and require much less capital than a whale wallet. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to look at it by, you know, what are the amount of, let's say, 100,000 or, or more? Mm -hmm. Let's just do this. We'll merge all of these tiers that hold 100,000 or more coins in them. And yeah, they've been moving up pretty pretty well, especially mm. since the beginning of April. And for comparison, if we do anything under 100,000, yeah, they're also moving up. So obviously mm. that red line is going to be more important here. I'm just going to overlay price on it. Sure. We'll back it up. Let's go back like to 2020. 
So yeah, you see plenty of moments where the red line is a little more shaky, mm -hmm. especially right here. And you can see what happened right after this red line started to go down. So did XRP's price. It's not always going to be that perfect, but the, the moral of the story is you want to see the 100K or more wallets continue to grow in number. And that's what they're doing right now. So I like the long-term outlook for XRP. I'm not so sure it has um, some special breakout potential over the shorter midterm, but uh, I think you're you're just fine if you're holding XRP for the long term. Mm, yeah, great insight. I, I love data like this because it's it's not emotional. It's not your bias. It is the data is what it is and the story that it's telling. Exactly. If you want to look at bias, look at, uh, you know, the FOMOers and the FUDs out there, and then you can do the obvious. But if you're trying to create your own narrative, it, it doesn't get better than looking at this kind of whale data and, uh, you know, network activity from, from an objective standpoint. Mm. Brian, always great info, my friend. Uh, really good stuff. And let's hope, uh, you know, by the next meeting <laughs> later this uh, or interview that we do uh, later this month, that things are a little bit better, not as bloody. <laughs> yeah, brother, fingers crossed. I, I like the uh, the potential for things to be going up till we uh, between now and when we talk again, but uh, anything can happen. And uh, I just recommend people stay safe out there. Don't over leverage, especially in this unpredictable time. And, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping for the best. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Tony. Always great.